Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we're gonna to be talking about the break keyword. So we started here with these nested while loops. We're gonna first convert it back to nested for loops because I think it's just a little bit clearer to see what's going on. And then we'll go from there. So before we get started, be sure to take a, take a moment to, or should I say take a break, <laughs> to check out our sponsor. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. All right, so let's convert these to for loops. It looks something like this. That will be the first for loop. And then inside the second one, we're going to have K. And set that equal to I. Inside of here, we're going to put the console right, like so. And then after this for loop, we'll do the console.write line. Get rid of this junk. Much better. All right, awesome. That gets rid of all of our syntax errors. Let's just run it and make sure everything is nice and pretty. And there you go. And then I've got a warning up here just because I have this random variable, which we're not going to need. So <laughs> just get rid of that. All right. So the break keyword. So you can use the break keyword whenever you want to exit a loop. So it's only going to exit the loop it's typed in. So for example, if we put the break right here, it's not going to break out of this for loop and this for loop. It'll only break out of the one it's in. But you're not just going to want to put it like that. You're probably going to want to put it in some kind of condition. So when do we want to break this loop? Well, let's say anytime we hit a particular value, such as three, we can break out of the loop. So to do that, we can say if k is equal to three, what do we do? We break. So we'll take this break and move it up here like so. Now when we run, taking a look at the output, each time it stops right before three. And it keeps doing that till we get to here, which the first number in this situation is three. So we just get rid of all of it. And then in this situation, there is no three because I started at two. So it just goes all the way down to zero. You could also use break in the outer for loop. So for example, we could break when I has the value five as an example, and we'll just put break. So let's run this. So it goes through each iteration until it reaches the next one, which would be five. So it goes nine, eight, seven, six, and then I is equal to five and it breaks. So break might be useful if you're looking for a particular value inside of a collection. So you can search through each thing and once you find it, you can say, hey, we found it, and then you can break. That way you don't have to keep going through the loop wasting cycles on your processor. So hopefully that was a good introduction to break. In the next video, we're going to continue this discussion by talking about the continue keyword. Dang, these puns are awesome. All right, see you guys in the next video.